everybody, and welcome to a little casual movie club on the spot mini sode. And it's just me today because I am uh, in Miami right now uh, visiting a friend of mine. So we had gone to the movies this evening and we saw The Lion King. And I thought I would share my thoughts on The Lion King. Uh, and we're referring to the uh, live action, and I'm using air quotes heavily with that, uh, the air quotes live version of The Lion King that recently just came out. Uh, and we, we, we've reviewed The Lion King on this podcast some time ago, so uh, by all means check out that episode because we reviewed the animated version from uh, the was it early 2000s, I, I forget the year, but, um, and then tonight I wanted to just talk a little bit about what I thought about this, uh, this live adaptation. Now, I'm just going to say in general, I mean, cause I won't be doing any numbers because Brian's not with me and, uh, it, you know, we, on these little mini shows, we don't do actual numbers, but, um, I have to say I have extremely mixed feelings on how the movie was. Visually, I want to, you know, and and you know what, I'm I'm going to go through our categories and just sort of, I'm not going to give number values, but I'll just kind of go through the categories here. Um, acting, very mediocre. Uh, I I don't think casting was great. You know, I thought Billy Eichner as uh, Timon was funny. He was he was pretty funny. I could tell that they had told him to tone it down or hold back or, or whatever, because I could tell he wanted to go farther, but didn't, probably because it's Disney. Um, Seth Rogen as Pumba, I could take or leave. I think he nailed the character just as a kind of casual, happy-go-lucky, you know, lovable big guy sort of thing can't sing to save his life and i even read that uh i forget where i saw that it might have even been the imdb trivia but i saw that uh pharrell had worked with him pharrell williams had worked with him on his singing and couldn't get could not get a solid note out of him or like he couldn't carry a tune to save his life it was obvious there was copious amounts of auto-tune in most of the singing that he was involved with so probably could have done better casting wise on that uh, I thought the young kids, young Simba, young Nala were fine. Uh, I liked Beyonce as adult Nala. Uh, I thought she was very nice, and I, I, I liked how she portrayed the role. I think she overacted a little bit in certain things, but it, it may just be par for the course with an animated movie. You know, I think it might, it might sort of, uh, it might be something you see a lot of as far as overacting goes, because you have to kind of compensate for that lack of seeing the actual actor, you know, doing what they're doing. Um, the the visual aspect of it is what I was most impressed with, because nothing in this movie was shot. There was nothing done on location. There were no live animals. It was all completely CG, all completely computer generated computer graphics so for that i give them you know hats off to that hats off to the team that did that it it looked very very good i i was kind of going into this expecting it to be a shot for shot remake of the animated version which it, it it was and it wasn't there were something i mean i don't have a photographic memory of the original but this definitely looked a lot like the original. It it almost seemed like a... It seemed like it was a shot-for-shot copy, but I'd have to go through and analyze the two, um, you know, the two movies back-to-back. I can't pronounce the guy's name, but the the person who played Scar did not feel it. I wasn't feeling his performance at all. Um, I would have loved to have seen Jeremy Irons uh, come back and reprise that role because James Earl Jones reprised his role as Simba. Uh, sorry, not Simba, Mufasa as the old Mufasa, which was I just could not imagine a more perfect uh, person playing that role. Um, there's uh, the woman playing uh, Sarabi. I think it's that's the right name. The, the Simba's mother. 
I cannot remember the actress's name, but she was in The Help. She should have been Sarabi. Uh, I don't know who the woman was that played Sarabi, but I, I didn't feel her performance. You know, there was a lot of a lot of the performances I just really weren't feeling. Um, Rafiki was great, the, the, the silly monkey. I would have liked to have seen more of him in there, because I, I almost want to say the animated version had more of him in there. I could be wrong. But I liked, I liked his performance and everything about that. Um, music and sound was great. You know, they reused a bunch of things from the animated version, like the opening part... I was expecting a new recording of the opening part, but it was just a... They reused the music and, re, and redubbed new vocals, uh, lead vocals on, on top of that. So, you know, I, I was expecting more. I was also expecting more from the sound as a whole, the soundtrack. Um, the theater that I saw it in offered two different show types. They had a regular, and then they had what looked like a Dolby Atmos... Um, show and we didn't go to an atmos show because there was only two tonight and they were all almost sold out but i i was i don't know the soundtrack just didn't feel full it didn't feel like it was done in terms of the sound quality and the mix quality of it it felt like it was rushed almost it just mix wise I, I feel like it i was expecting the bass to hit harder i was you know in the very beginning when you know when there's that big bass hit and the, the lion king uh, title comes up. I was expecting the bass to just hit me in the chest, and it didn't. And the theater that we were seeing it in was relatively new. It, it was a huge theaterplex in downtown Miami, and I, the name is escaping me because I'm somewhat tired, but I wanted to do this before I forgot about what I wanted to talk about. And the, the movie theater has like 16 theaters in it. It's in like a little high bottom of a high rise. So I was expecting more from the quality of the movie sound in the in the actual, you know, room. Um, the sound just felt, eh, you know, kind of mediocre and lackluster. So, uh, and I thought towards the end, the ending was rushed. Like they, it felt completely rushed. You know, when they were presenting, you know, Simba's little kid. That whole part felt really rushed, and then the Lion King title came at the very end. It was all just kind of like, oh, oh, okay. You know, it didn't have that same pacing as the the beginning title. So, um, it was it was enjoyable. Uh, I'm going to say that. Do I recommend seeing it? Yes, I definitely recommend seeing it. Take your kids to go see it. They're going to love it. Um, it's it's a beautiful film to watch especially if you know the story, because the story is exactly the same as the animated version. Um, oh, I didn't care for the way they did Hakuna Matata. Not Hakuna Matata, I'm sorry. I didn't care for the way they did Be Prepared. Uh, and I think Jeremy Irons is a better singer than the guy who played Scar. It was like Ch Chiwetel Idafor. I I'm butchering his name, and I'm sorry if he ever hears this. Um, Jeremy Irons is not known for his singing, but Jeremy Irons pulled it off better as Scar in the animated version. And I want to say there was a trivia piece that I saw that Jeremy Irons wanted to reprise his role of Scar. He should have. He definitely should have. Um, do I have anything else I want to say about it? No, honestly, I think that's about it. So, you know, do I recommend going to see the new, uh, air quotes, live action uh, Lion King, yes, definitely go see it. Check it out, and you know, hit us up on all kinds of social media. Let us know what you thought of it. Tweet us at Casual Movie Club, and uh, you know, post us uh, an Instagram or two. You can tag us on Instagram as well. Shoot us an email, uh, Casual Movie Club at Hotmail .com. You can also call us or leave us a text message or a voice message at uh, 402 402-882-2742. And I actually know that number now. I'm impressed with myself. But uh, anyway, um, once again, John from Casual Movie Club, thanks for tuning in. We appreciate it as always. And uh, we will see you on the next episode where we review something.